Hi, everyone. I want to talk about something very important when it comes to victims and conspiracy theories. I think it's very important to talk about this because through this, we bring awareness. Lenny Posner, he was targeted after he lost his child at Sandy Hook, Noah his baby. Lenny, 51, is preparing to pack his bags again. A few weeks ago, hoaxers, as he calls conspiracy theorists, reproduced a map of his Florida neighborhood with a dropped pen marking the precise location of his apartment. It will be the eighth time in five years he will have been forced to move home as he strives to keep one step ahead of the fanatics who relentlessly hound him. Posner's crime in the eyes of conspiracy theorists is being the father of one of the 20 children who were gunned down in the mass shooting in Newton, Connecticut, in December of 2012. Noah was the youngest of all victims. He had just turned six years old. Within months, conspiracy theorists egged on by Alex Jones and Infowars went to work. They generated thousands of web posts and a 426-page book called Nobody Died at Sandy Hook. Their thesis, the shooting at the elementary school, never happened. The 20 kids who died were crisis actors. The tragedy was a con. Noah had never even existed. He was a constructive Photoshop. Within a year, it had reached such a pitch that Posner, Noah's father, knew he had to do something. Here's his words. I agonized about the situation for several weeks, but ultimately I felt I owed it to my son to protect his memory. He posted on his Google Plus page his son's birth and death certificates and kindergarten report card. I was extremely naive, said Noah's dad. I believe that people were simply misinformed and that if I released proof that my child had existed, thrived, loved, and was loved, and was ultimately murdered, they would understand our grief, stop harassing us, and more importantly, stop defacing photos of Noah and defaming him online. Instead, He watched his deceased son buried a second time under hundreds of pages of hateful, hateful web content. I don't think there's any one word that fits the horror of it, Noah's dad says. It's a phenomenon of the age which we are in, modern day witch hunts. It's a form of mass delusion. Noah's dad is extraordinarily controlled. His voice is flat and prenaturally calm, as though all emotion has been pummeled out of him. His apartment has the same pared-down antiseptic quality. I've gotten good at moving. I've adapted to it. He says he left Newton for Florida in 2013 with Noah's mother, his now former wife, Veronica, and their two daughters in the hope of rebuilding their lives. He doesn't want anyone to know the identity of the town he lives in now. He has deliveries sent to a separate address and has rented multiple postal boxes as decoys. They are victims. 
The most serious of death threats came from Lucy Richards, a Florida resident who was so fervent in her belief that the Sandy Hook massacre was fake that she left messages on Noah's dad's cell phone saying, You are going to die. Death is coming to you real soon. And there's nothing you can do about it in June 2017. Richard was sentenced to five months in prison, followed by a further five month under house arrest for doing that. Posner sees this outpouring of hatred as a product of digital technology running ahead of society's ability to contain it. Social media has matured. We lack a segment of law enforcement specializing in it. There really is no one to help. But he reserves his staunch criticism for Alex Jones, who he blames for amplifying conspiracies and the pursuit of profit. In a lawsuit suing Jones for defamation, more than $1 million. Lawyers for Noah's father chronicle how Infowars baited them over many years. The shooting was staged a giant hoax. The school was an elaborate film set. It was all a soap opera. But in targeting Noah's dad and his family, Jones picked on the wrong guy. Since 2014, Posner has made it his life's work to confront the conspiracy theorist through his organization, Honor Network, H-O-N-R Network. Posner has systematically challenged those who believes cross that line. Forcing moderators to delete posts in 2018 alone, he reported 2,568 videos to YouTube and had 1,555 of those expunged. Posner's lawsuit against Jones, which mirrors a similar legal case brought by Fontaine, is making its way through a federal court in Austin, Texas. Earlier this month, they received a legal boost when the judge granted them access to Jones' financial and marketing documents under discovery. Jones denies defaming anyone. Of course he does. Though he has so far failed in having the suits dismissed on free speech grounds. Regarding the free speech argument, Noah's dad says, you have the right to express yourself and your opinions, no matter how offensive they may be, until your chosen form of expression impedes my rights to be free from defamation and harassment. What shocks Noah's father the most, he says, was how alone he was when he began this fight. I was the only one standing up to the hoaxers and others that, and all the others, then the loss of my son, that was my biggest disappointment at the time. At least he has brought his son's memory back to life. If you search Noah Posner on Google, you will find hundreds of articles about the boy's life and death and virtually none of the bile from those who questioned his existence. By Posner's reckoning, one in five people around the world are suggestible to conspiracy theories and their obsessions are amplified by the crude logic of digital algorithms. There is just no more truth. There is just what's trending on Twitter, he says. Used to be you had to burn books to keep people from finding out the truth. Now you just have to push it to page 20 of a Google search. And there's so many other victims out here that have to deal with conspiracy theories. People that are falsely accused and victims that are defamed and the truth is, is made up illusions. When does it stop? When? Why can't victims mourn? 
I just gave you one father's story. So to everyone out there that continues conspiracy theories and, and everything when it comes to victims, stop it. You are minimizing the pain of these victims. And you have to also understand that you can be in big trouble. Not only can you be sued, but you can also be imprisoned. It's time to stop it. And I've seen some people use conspiracy theories and under the disguise of helping victims. You're not helping victims using conspiracy theories. And it's got to stop. It has to stop. So I respectfully ask anyone that is doing this, please stop it. Stop minimizing victims and their pain. Let them mourn in peace. Don't defame any victim's legacy. It's not right. And I will always stand up for what is right. And I will always stand up for victims. And I will never keep quiet when it comes to victims. God bless all of you. And God bless your families. And to those that are doing this, please stop. Stop it. And you know who you are.